Well, good morning. A very warm welcome to St Mary's Church, Beverly, for our harvest service. It is wonderful to be able to worship with you and to give thanks for the goodness that God gives us. Today, we'll be using music and pictures from the local area to give thanks for the beauty and wonder of God's creation. But we begin with an opening prayer. God of plenty, God of fruitfulness, God of generosity, God of love beyond measure, God of extravagance, God of celebration, God of goodness, God of love beyond imagining, we gather bringing the best that we can offer. To give thanks for the good things you give us, to share your generosity with others. reading this morning is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 26 verses 2 to 4. Take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land that the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Here ends the lesson. 
Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 21. The parable of the tenants. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall round it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them in the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. And so shall we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I wonder what you last said thank you for. If you could just perhaps cast your mind back. Was it a cup of tea or coffee that somebody brought you? Was it somebody making way for you so you could get past in the streets? Perhaps it was somebody helping you reach a very high tin of food down from the supermarket shelf. Saying thank you is a really important thing and it's something that we train our children to do from a very early age. At our school at St Mary's, we spend a lot of time reminding the children of the importance of saying thank you. So when somebody opens the door, they say thank you. When somebody lends them a rubber or a pencil or a pen, they know to say thank you. Sometimes we say thank you in more significant ways. A nice letter or card to somebody who has been alongside us in difficult times. In fact, birthdays are often a way of just saying thank you for being you. That's how I think of them, at least, anyway. Giving thanks for one another is something that we often do naturally. But I wonder if we always remember to give thanks to God for the gifts that he gives us. We're very good at saying, please help, or asking God to be alongside us, or even getting cross with God when things don't turn out our way. And those things are really important. We find them in the Bible, particularly in the book of Psalms, again and again and again. Psalm 13, for example, says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear this pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day long? 
It is right and good to be honest about when things are difficult. It is right and good to ask God for help when we need it. But interestingly, this same psalm moves on. Just a few verses later, it says, But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart rejoiced in your salvation. The psalmist is able to recognise the goodness of God, even though he's been through times of difficulty and distress. And perhaps it's exactly the same thing that is going on in our Deuteronomy reading today. Because we hear the people who have been freed from Egypt and are now heading towards the Promised Land being asked to put aside the first fruits of their harvest as a thanksgiving to God. It says this, When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first fruits of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go and place it in the name of the Lord. You take the very best, not the worst or the leftovers, not the last of what you have, but the very best, the first, and give it to God. It's a way of saying thank you to God for the wonder of his creation, for the gifts that he's given, for the fact that even in times of difficulty or worry or darkness or distress, God has still been there with you. That's what's being said to God's people. And my goodness, did they know what it was like to be in times of difficulty. They had been slaves in Egypt under the rule of a terrible dictator. They had escaped, and in escaping, they'd found themselves in the wilderness, and it seemed to go on forever and ever and ever. And they worried about where their food and where their water would come from and whether they'd made the right decision. In fact, some of them even wanted to go back, go back to Egypt, because it seemed so hard. And yet now they're being told that when they finally make it into a safe place, they are to give the very best that God has given them back to God. What does that mean? What does it mean to give back to God the things that he has given? Well, I think we get a clue from Jesus' teaching. Jesus tells us, that when we do something for the least of our brothers and sisters, by which he means any of those who are in need, we do the same thing for him, for God. When we clothe somebody who is naked, when we feed somebody who is hungry, when we give water to somebody who is thirsty, when we visit somebody who's in prison or in need, that's when we're giving to God a thanksgiving for what he has given to us. And so harvest is a really important time, a really important time in which we say thank you to God for the wonder, beauty, and splendor of creation, for the extraordinary things that we have that make our life better or well, for our security, our safety, our peace, for the nourishment we have. And we say thank you by sharing it with others who are less fortunate, others who at this moment are struggling. Of course, it may be that it's us that at this moment need the help of others. But it may also be that it's a call for us to be generous in our giving. 
generous in our giving to those who are in need, to the church as it seeks to work out its purposes, to those who've fallen on hard times, and not to share the very last of what we have, the final sweet in the sweet packet, the mouldy old tin of pilchards that nobody likes in the cupboard, but to share the first fruits of what we have. And so if you would like to say thank you to God today for the gifts that he has given, perhaps you'd like to give part of your donation to the food bank. That's who we're collecting for at St Mary's. And in giving to those in need, you're saying thank you. Thank you to God for his steadfast love, for his mercy that endures forever, and for the life and love that we receive in Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Lord God, we give you thanks for your gifts to us today. Bless them that we might share them with those who are most in need, in and through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Prayers for October the 4th. Harvest. Heavenly Father, as we give thanks for all that you give us, help us to remember our brothers and sisters who do not have such good things. When we hear the gentle sound of the rain watering the earth, help us to remember the thirst of those whose land is dry. When we feel the warmth of the sun on our faces, help us to remember the plight of those who are locked away in darkness. When we buy the first fruits of the world's harvests, help us to remember the hunger of those whose baskets are empty. When we relax in times of holiday, help us to remember those who have to work without ceasing when we celebrate the blessings at harvest time. Help us to remember those who experience difficulties and disaster. May our remembering reactivate our conscience and result in a renewed commitment to Christ in our neighbour. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your transforming love. Amen. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
And so as we come to the end of our service, we want to thank you for joining us. To remind you that there's an awful lot still happening, even though we can't gather in large groups. Please do check out our websites, samariesbeverly.org, or sign up for our notice sheets. You can do that through the website or by sending us an email to stmarys.beverly at gmail.com. Also, just to remind you, if you would like to leave a harvest donation, please do bring it to church. We can't accept food, but if you want to leave a gift of money or um, a contribution in that way to the food bank, please leave an envelope in the plinth marked Harvest and we'll make sure that it gets to the right place. Also, for those of you who are able to access Facebook, I encourage you to look for our Facebook group and to join. Every day we have prayers that people have offered uh, that are shared with us on Facebook, and all the news and information is there as well. And now we come to our final blessing. Heaven in the um, wildness of creation, may we seek justice in bread of the world. May we, may we resurrection in the sunsets of autumn, and may we find God in the um, sharing of it all. Amen. Amen.